Welcome and a wonderful evening, ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues. It's wonderful to see you all here. Thank you so much for coming to celebrate 15 years of European digital rights with us. My name is Geraldine Bastian from the Berlin-based NGO Digitale Gesellschaft, or Digital Society, and I'm very happy to be the moderator for this evening and, yeah, to be celebrating, like I said, together 15th, uh, f the birth, sorry, <laughs> the birthday, 15th birthday party of Edri with all of you tonight. I want to start by giving you just a little bit of an overview of what we have planned. We have two keynotes from political representatives here in Brussels for you, and then we're going to have a little bit of an extended fireside chat, basically. We have five of the founding members of IDRI here today to give a little bit of insight, what the motivations to found IDRI, what has happened since then, and an outlook to the future. So I'm very much looking forward to talking with them. And after that, of course, we have a party planned for all of you. So we hope you brought your dancing shoes and are going to stay with us throughout the evening. Um, first up, it's my pleasure to introduce Sophie Intveld. She is a Dutch politician and a member of the Party Democrat 66. She was elected as a member of the European Parliament in 2004 and re-elected 2009 and 14. Please give her a warm, big round of applause. So, hello everybody. Um, let me start by saying happy birthday. And congratulations, congratulations on 15 years of very good work. And congratulations on your farsightedness at the time, because you created Edry just one year before Mark Zuckerberg created Facebook. Very <laughs> smart move. <laughs> so maybe we'll be invited to his 15th birthday party <laughs> next year. Now, this all, uh, everything sort of coincides because uh, I was first elected in 2004, so we have walked much of the road together. Uh, and very often it was an uphill walk, but we've also reached very high peaks. We've passed some very, very important legislation and sometimes we've been celebrating landmark court rulings. Uh, but of course, there have also been very, very difficult times, and there are still some difficult times ahead too, so I think it is very good that, uh, that we stick together. Um, in 2004, I took over from uh, my predecessor, Johanna bogert Quack. maybe some of you will remember her. She was the very first European Parliament Rapporteur on PNR in 2003. And she managed at the time to secure a majority in the European Parliament for challenging the EU-US PNR agreement in court successfully. Uh, the sad side is, of course, that we are now 15 years down the road and the file is still not closed. But I got into her footsteps. Now, I was asked to say a few words about my personal drive for the topics of privacy and data protection. And in a way, I was thinking that's a very funny question because well, it seems so e self-evident. The right to privacy and data protection are fundamental rights. They are legal rights enshrined in law. They are enforceable in court. Um, and they are on the par with, for example, freedom of speech, uh, the right to family life, or the ban on slavery. And none of those fundamental rights are ever disputed. And if I were to campaign for the freedom of speech or the ban of slavery, I would not be asked why. I would not be asked to explain or to justify, but somehow the right to privacy and data protection still have to be justified. They are seen as lesser rights, as some sort of you know, political, uh, frivolous, usually left-wing, which is terrible, left-wing is terrible these days, uh, something political, ideological, but it's not. It is a legal right. It's in the treaties. Let's not forget that. So defending them is the natural thing to do. Privacy and data protection are therefore not negotiable. There is no such thing as a balance between privacy and security or a trade-off between data protection and business interests, just as we do not accept a trade-off on other fundamental rights. Privacy and data protection are closely connected to other rights and freedoms. The right to free speech or the right to equal treatment, the right to mental and physical integrity. 
the right to be able to make a well-informed choice in elections, for example, as we have seen recently. Privacy and data protection are also a protective wall against manipulation and abuse of power because privacy and data protection are very much about power and freedom. Your personal data are about power. And freedom for me personally is one of the most important values. And I don't only mean economic freedom, but also our personal individual freedom. And in particular, vis-a-vis -vis the government or governments or authorities. Because too easily we forget that governments are actually supposed to be controlled by us and not the other way around. And that seems to be forgotten. And I was asked about my personal motivation. Uh, it, it is very closely linked to uh, my membership of my political party, Democrat 66. It was founded in, yes, 1966 as a can kind of uh, anti-establishment party. Some people find it hard to imagine that we were once anti-establishment, but it's true. Um, but for me, that is still the, 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 the core um, objective of the founding fathers of my party was to empower citizens vis-a-vis -vis the government. It was about, uh, let's say, breaking the arrogance of power uh, and also the monopoly of political parties, but very much about empowering the citizen. And that has always been the theme throughout my work and uh, the work of my political party. Now, coming back to today, I suppose that you actually got the best anniversary gift you could imagine by Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> because clearly Facebook has guessed your deepest wishes. Because never before have we seen such a steep rise in awareness. And I'm delighted about that. I have to say that for the last two weeks, I felt like floating on a pink cloud, you know? Because for 14 years, people told me privacy, I mean, honestly, I mean, at best, they thought, you know, I was a harmless nutcase, and at worst, they told me that I'm, I'm in the way of the fight against terrorism and I have blood on my hands. But I always had to defend it, and now all of a sudden, you know, privacy is really cool, or hot, or both. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm really happy, uh, but w when I hear lots of people um, being terribly outraged and shocked, I confess that I cannot help thinking uh, under what stone have you been living for the last 15 years? Um, because if you find out now that companies like Facebook are massively collecting your personal data and uh, doing all sorts of stuff with them that they weren't supposed to do, then, um, I don't know, probably you've been in the desert or something. Uh, but I'm not complaining because I think the wake-up call is most welcome. So now I hope that after the wake-up call we will not go back to snooze mode. And I hope that we will draw some lessons. For example, from now on, to actually pay heed to advice of experts. Experts like EDRI, or the EDPS, or Working Party 29, and maybe two or three smart MEPs. Um, <laughs> you know, this is also the, the, the sort of I told you so era. Um, because I hope all those politicians, including colleagues of mine, who are now loudly denouncing the practices of Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, will use their newly gained insights when they will vote, for example, on the e-privacy regulation, on, <laughs> on new PNR agreements, or revised PNR agreements, or on Privacy Shield. But I have to say, I'm not 100% reassured, having listened to the statement of some of my colleagues uh, in the debate on Privacy Shield this morning. I think even if they were shocked about Cambridge Analytica, they're clearly not shocked enough. <laughs> because they seem to forget that Cambridge Analytica and Facebook are in Privacy Shield and use the Privacy Shield to transfer the data to the United States. But of course, being coherent is not a basic requirement of politics. <laughs> uh. <laughs> now, I also hope that the wake-up call and the general indignation will not focus only on Facebook and the use of personal data by businesses, but also on the ever-expanding data-grabbing powers of public authorities, in particular intelligence and security services. Because you thought that Cambridge Analytica was bad? You were worried about Zuckerberg using your data? 
Well, wait until you see the US Cloud Act and President Trump, Trump getting his fingers all over your data stored in Europe. But of course, the European Commission will not tolerate this American territorial overreach. And as always, the Commission will be very firm and assertively defend the rights of European citizens and the jurisdiction of the EU. Uh, no, sorry, that's the wrong speaking note. Uh, th this was actually my wish list for the Tooth Fairy. So, sorry. Because in reality, the member states have already mandated the European Commission to negotiate away European citizens' rights, as always. And as always, we will do whatever we can to stop them. Now, in recent weeks, many people have closed their Facebook accounts. Uh, and as much as I have understanding and sympathy for that, I do not think it's the way. First of all, because it's largely symbolical, as you cannot really fully protect your privacy. You cannot escape, not even if you go and live naked in the desert, because you'll still be spotted by a drone or a satellite. Uh, but also because next to Facebook, your data are being held by another 10,000 or so other companies. But apart from all those practical considerations, I also do not think that we should cap capitulate. We should not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because, yes, I think we can still say, Facebook and other services have also brought us fantastic new opportunities. So let's embrace the new opportunities, but also regulate and enforce better. And let's not forget that the internet era is very young, is roughly one generation old. And it's a bit like uncharted territory, like a new land that we are exploring. And just like pioneers, we have to make the new land inhabitable, create roads and infrastructure, draw maps and navigation signs, draw up rules and laws, create enforcement powers. And we are in the process of doing just that. And organizations like EDRI are a bit like the pioneers, like the scouts. They're traveling ahead, exploring the new territory and showing the way. So let me conclude by once again congratulating you on 15 years of excellent and important work. Your work is vital for a healthy and robust democracy. And I'm looking forward to many more years of good cooperation. Thank you.